What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here. Today, we're gonna look at coffee shots. Now, I know I did a video already on Spro Overs, and I had a lot of great feedback on it, but that type of shot is for a very specific type of machine, and I wanted to make that style of coffee accessible to everyone, so we're gonna go back in time and do the coffee shot for this. So stay tuned, learn how to pull coffee shots. All right, so today we're gonna to go over coffee shots. Now, I wanna do this because when I released the Spro Over video, a lot of you were wanting to do that type of shot but didn't have the machine capable of flow profiling. And to do a Spro Over, you need flow profiling capabilities. So I wanted to make this more accessible, so we're gonna go back in time. Uh, the Spro Over, as you know from that video, is kind of the evolution of the coffee shot, which is the evolution of another thing and another thing back 50, 60 so, yep, uh, so years ago. So we're gonna go back to the, the, what, the stage right before the Spro Over, and we're gonna look at coffee shots so that you can make filter coffee on your espresso machine, regardless of what it is, as long as it's not gonna shut you off before you get to get you know two, 300 mils of water out. Um, any machine can do it. It doesn't matter if it's nine bar the whole time or if you can flow profile, whatever, you're gonna be able to do this. So this is what Matt Perger did at the 2012-2013 World Barista Championship. He did a recipe of, eight, uh, everybody recommended was 18 grams in, 345 grams out, you heard that right, 345, almost a one to 20 ratio, and he recommended 45 seconds. So of course, grind size, use a temperature of 89 to 91 Celsius, or around 192, 194. I have this set to 192. And the reason you want it so low is because essentially, what we're doing is not espresso. So when you see this pulling and you're like, oh, this is blasphemy, that's not proper espresso. I don't see the crema cascading and I don't see the lovely warm honey trickling from the basket. Don't worry about it, because this is not an attempt at espresso. This is an attempt to use an espresso machine for something that's not espresso. So essentially, doing this is looking at this machine and saying, you're not an espresso machine, you're a machine that pumps out pressure through a portafilter, and I can use that for something else. So we're gonna use this as a pour-over basket, essentially. We're gonna use low pressure, sort of like an AeroPress, but it's gonna be percolation. It's not gonna be like immersion, it's not gonna have emulsification, it's not gonna be espresso. So what we're doing is we are using this no bypass brewer. There's no way for water to go anywhere but through grounds. We're gonna do coarser grind setting, which if you watched my turbo shot video, has been proven to have benefits as far as lessened channels, okay? And then we're also, uh, because of all that and because this is gonna have the highest temp stability of any pour over device there is, we're gonna use a lower temp so that we don't uh, over extract or make something that's not taste, uh, tasty, especially since we can't control the temperature throughout the duration of the shot. So at the end, when we're maybe not, we're getting stuff out that we maybe not want, we're not gonna have 200 or, or you know 96 degree Celsius water hitting over that. So set the temp to 192. Uh, Pre-infusion is great if you can do eight or ten seconds of pre-infusion to saturate that puck prior to full uh, before the full flow is hitting it. That's great. If you can't, that's also great. Uh, but essentially, what we're doing is uh, because even nine bar machines can't hit nine bar unless you're giving it resistance. We are forcing them to pull at a lower pressure uh, by doing coarser grounds. So. I'm gonna do the traditional, uh, roughly the traditional recipe that Perger does, but I'm gonna add two elements. Um, I'm gonna do a mesh screen on top, which is speculatively helpful in radial extraction and helping to spread out the water over the puck so that you know the water coming out is evenly going through all of this puck from left to right horizontal extraction. Uh, of course, that's not really proven. There's, there's just kind of conjectural uh, evidence out there, kind of um, anecdotal evidence. Um, so we're gonna put that on top of the pucket. Pucket. We're gonna put it on top of the pucket. Uh, and then on the bottom, I have this little filter that I'm gonna plop in there. And if you're wondering how I got this little filter, I got a two and a half inch hole cutter, like a craft hole cutter online, which is the perfect size for the bottom of most 58 millimeter baskets. And then you can buy like lab grade paper, just shove it in here. Just shove it in here, and you're just gonna go like this. So fun. So now we got a filter for the bottom. Now you might be asking, what's that filter for? Well, I've linked this in many videos before. I'm gonna link it again. Below, Jonathan Gagne has um, his research on how this uh, increases slightly the hydraulic resistance. That's not why I'm doing it here. I'm doing it to clean up the final cup. This is gonna hold back some of that crema, some of those oils. It's also going to help hold back some of the particulates that can easily make its way through those, um, through those small holes. So, let's go ahead. I just dumped in some uh, coffee that I've not dialed in. These are not my machines. I, this is just the Breville Smart Grinder Pro and the dual boiler, which are my cameramans. 
and I just pop some coffee in. We're gonna just dial it in live so that we, uh, you can see how all this works. Because I want all of you to be able to experience this at home. You can have a quick, easy filter cup of coffee in 45 seconds as opposed to a full pour over if you're rushed for time. I, I'm not saying don't do pour overs. I love pour overs, obviously. I'm competitive brewer. I'm just saying this is something fun to try and I want you all to be able to try it without flow profiling machines, which is necessary for those spro overs. So, all that out of the way, let's get to grinding. That's pretty money. All right, so we're gonna hit that. All right, 18.1, I'm gonna call that good. Make sure it's nice and level. Pull this off and then I'm gonna just give it a little tap to collapse the holes. And then I'm gonna take my tamper and nope, I'm not gonna tamp it. I'm not tamping it. When, if you tamp it, uh, and this of course is again speculation, this is based off of my own experience, but also uh, at Perger's recommendation. When you're tamping it, it makes it more difficult for the water to evenly go through that puck. You're, you're taking space away. So when you're leaving it untamped, it's similar to like a pour over. You don't tamp a pour over. You don't want any of it compressed, right? So with pour overs, you don't compress it. With this, I'm not compressing. I do tap, which slightly compresses, but I'm doing that to, to slap down those holes. And then uh, once the, the puck is wet, we're gonna be good to go. So I've, I've tapped down, so we have a nice flat bed. And I'm gonna take my mesh, which the mesh, uh, there's multiple uh, manufacturers of these, these mesh um, uh, pieces. This one's from Normcore, uh, which they did send to me for free. Uh, and then I also have a Flare 58 one, which comes with the 58 um, uh, lever machine. And then B Plus also makes them. So you have your selection there if you want to do this. This is not necessary. Neither is the bottom filter. I'm doing it because I think it cleans the cup up. And putting the mesh filter on top helps keep my screen clean so I don't have to do screen cleaning. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to place this under. I'm going to take my scale, put it underneath, and then we're going to get that shot going. All right, so I'm looking for, I have 18 grams in the basket. I'm looking for 345 grams out roughly. I might stop it at 300, maybe 320. But we're gonna see this is the first shot. We're gonna see what it looks like. We're pulling. Um, I have about eight or nine second pre-infusion on this machine. So taking that to account with the 45 seconds. So it's coming out, we're at about 40 grams. This needs to speed up. So we're at 25 seconds, we're at 60 grams. So I'm probably going to have to course in this grind a bit. All right, we're at 100 grams. Yeah, we got to course in this quite a bit. All right, we're at 45 seconds. I'm going to stop it. And we're at 130 grams. So we're going to have to course in this up quite a bit. And there's still a ton of crema. This actually hit 7 bar, which is crazy. So I'm going to, I'm going to go into essentially low drip settings almost, low, low pour over. I was at a 20, I'm going up to about a 25. We're gonna see how this works. So I'm gonna take this out. And remember, because that bottom paper filters in there, it is gonna raise your hydraulic resistance. So keep that in mind whenever you are pulling. And, all right, so I'm gonna stir this up. We're gonna give it a sip. I'm gonna stir it up, try to get some of that crema dissipated. I may actually skim some of that off. I don't want any of that crema. I'm just gonna scoop it off. I don't want to be met with that bitter layer of nasties. All right. Let me get one more stir. We'll go back and forth. Since this is going to be extracting layers with even that minimal pressure, I want to make sure I have it integrated. So now this is what we have pulled from an espresso machine. All right, the coffee shot. We're just going to give it a little. Still very hot. Um, but it's quite, it's quite, and I don't like this word when discussing coffee. It is quite smooth. Some of that, uh, the, some of that fruitiness isn't quite there. So actually, I'm gonna do a lesser ratio uh, to really make it uh, pop a little bit more. So even though I'm well under Perger suggested, I'm gonna go shorter because there ain't no rules. Ain't no rules in school. Um, actually, I could go coarser though. Coarser would also help that. So I'm actually gonna go coarser. I'm gonna try to stick within the parameters, though there is no rules in school. So if I do, I went a lot coarser here, and if it still isn't popping the way I think that it should, because this is a, a, a nice um, light-ish roasted uh, uh, Ethiopia coffee, there should be some nice citrus, uh, citrus fruits in there. I'm not really getting it. So I'm gonna try this again, and I'm gonna do it with a coarser ground coffee. But before doing that, I do wanna show you this puck, which came out really, I mean, beautifully. Whoa. Well, there that goes. It did come out really beautifully though. 
and you can see on the bottom how that filter absorbed a ton of those little bits of fines and whatnot. And I have not wiped my porta filter clean, but I want to show you how it looks. I've not wiped that at all. So when you're using uh, when you're using that bottom filter, that top filter, cleanup is negligible. There's like no nothing to do. But now uh, when you pull the puck out, <laughs> that's another story. All right. Now I'm going to have my next shot prepped. All right, so I've gotten the next shot prepped and ready to go at the coarser grind setting. We're going to try this again, and then I've kept my last coffee shot so that I can compare it to ensure I'm going in the right direction with coarser and that I shouldn't have truncated the shot. We're going to see, though. We're going to do another shot here. All right, so I've got my bottom filter. I've got the mesh filter on top. I did not tamp, and I'm going to start my shot. All right, so we have the pre-infusion going. There's no bar pressure really because it's just uh, that puck is absorbing it. And now we're kicking to the higher flow rate. The bar, it's only at one bar of pressure. So I have now effectively gone from one and a half to two-ish down to about one. Now at about, I'm at about one and a half now. I was sitting straight up at two the whole time last time. We're sitting at about one and a half bar. And that is because I course in that grind setting. So we don't have the resistance in order for that pressure to rise, which I talk about in my truth about espresso and pressure video I've linked right above. All right, we're at 35 seconds, so we're closing in on 200. All right, we're at 42 seconds, we're at 220. And we're gonna stop it at 250 again, which was right around that, uh, about that 48 second mark or so. All right, so I've got this, and we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna scrape off the crema that has been sitting on top. It's a very thin crema, obviously, as you would imagine. Very, it's got bigger bubbles. It's not that tight, thick, viscous crema that you see on, you know, six, seven, eight, nine bar espresso shots. This is a much thinner type of crema. Really easy to scoop away, and I'm just going to kind of stir, stir it right here. Do that right there. Going to let it lose some of its temp because it's very hot right now. But yeah, the way I like to describe these style of shots, because it's, you know, one to two bar of pressure, is they're essentially a percolative, I don't know if that's even a real word, but a percolative aeropress. So we're doing low pressure like in an aeropress, but it's not immersion, because it's not just water sitting in coffee. It's fresh water coming and going, coming and going, coming and going. So you're getting kind of that idea of the aeropress with the idea of like pour over. Um, and yeah, and you're going to have the best temp stability you could ask for because we have it in this metal basket that is being heated by a lot of different elements, especially in a machine like this that's electronically saturated at the group. It's going to have incredible heat retention. So honestly, I could probably go down even further on temp, and I likely would um, if I was going to sit here and dial it to perfection. But we're going to see how this relates to this, and it'll give us an idea of which direction I should have gone. So let's go ahead and give it a little, little, let's give it a little sippy sip. I'm going to do a little... Okay, that's much better. So I went in the right direction. Some stone fruit is popping out. It's actually kind of like baked peaches. Um, wow, that's very good. There's like brown sugar in it. And the reason I'm holding it like this is this cup is not made for such hot temperatures. It holds pour over as well. Um, straight up 170 degree temps. Uh, no thanks. All right, let's see. But they're still my favorite cups and I'll go through pain to use them. Okay, yeah, so this was a good decision. It's like... You've got that baked peach, like kind of like baked orange type thing going on. You've got like a brown sugar. You've got black tea, maybe a som tea even. Uh, orange blossom. It is very good. Um, and it's clean. It's not astringent. My tongue is fine. There's not those particulates that get through because I put that bottom filter on. Again, you don't have to for this shot. And in fact, the original did not have that bottom filter. And doing the bottom filter will force you to grind coarser. But that's actually probably better for most of our home grinders because not all of us are rocking, you know, one, two, three, four thousand dollar grinders at home. We're rocking two hundred dollar grinders, three hundred dollar grinders, and those are going to be more effective at coarser grind settings anyway, as far as fines productions. So. It'll actually help if you, you know, cut out your filter, put it on the bottom, throw that mesh filter on top. You're going to have easy cleanup. You're going to have um, a coarser grind setting, so probably a better particle distribution um, and, and less channeling, potentially. Um, anyway, I just want to kind of walk through uh, you with that so that you can have a quick reference on how to dial this in, on how to play around. Oh, wow, I just snorted like a pig right then. Did you hear that? I was like... Uh, this is really good. I would still, I would probably tweak it a little bit more though. I would probably drop it four or five degrees, honestly, because I think there's still a lot more this coffee could give as far as acidity goes. But I'm liking this grind size. I like the flow rate. Um, looked pretty good. 
Anyway, give this a try at home. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below on this. Uh, give it a try. Let me know below uh, how you like it. You know, let me know, if, is this something you've done before? Is, have you done a similar recipe? Do you have a recipe you recommend as kind of like your go-to recipe? Have you experienced problems with these? Have, do you typically dislike? Anyway, I just, I wanna hear below. I have a Patreon just below that I would love support on. It helps me with production, it helps me with uh, getting equipment, getting coffees, getting all these different things to make the video production even better. Uh, and we have an awesome community there where I do awesome giveaways. Recently gave away Gaja Classic Pro. I still have to ship it because customs. But uh, I'm about to give away a lot of grinders because I have some really cool videos coming up for y'all. Um, about to give away a lot of drippers and a lot of different things. So um, it'd be fun if you all joined. Everything that I buy from that, uh, from that fund, I give right back to the Patreon community. Um, anyway, subscribe, like the video, do the, do the do's, do the dudes, do the deeds. Do the do the do the the stuff, um, and again, thank you so much. Cheers.